stumble upon, pay discovery, okay? Stumble upon, which back in the <laughs> SEO days, it was all like paying people to try to click, click stumble for you and sharing. Now you can actually get stum paid stumbles, okay? A thousand paid stumbles resulted in over 20,000 page views in 30 days, okay? And it only cost 9.6 cents per view, per thousand views, okay? Very, very cheap. Reddit paid ads. I didn't even know what a Reddit was, honestly. I'm, I had no clue what a Reddit was or if it is a thing. But basically, Reddit allows a paid ad traffic. We started using it. 298 targeted clicks for only 16 cents per click. Okay? You can't get traffic that cheap anymore, guys, without content. You definitely, if that was to an offer, which Reddit wouldn't even run, I guarantee your clicks would be 50, 60, 70 cents or more. Twitter ads. This was great for us. 617 engagements for 65 cents each and 93 front-end conversions, okay? Off of Twitter, 65 cents, okay? Those are a little bit higher, but those were direct to sales, and those sales were 997 sales. So there's almost $100,000 in sales. Think that one would help you guys out? Absolutely. Facebook promoted post, okay, so this is a stately. This is a big real estate blog. They did a $100 promoted post on their page, basically a boosted post, right? Resulted in 30,000 visitors to their site. Now, what's the word that I've been saying over and over again that everybody has to say today? Come on. Retargeting, right? How about if they had a retargeting pixel or five on this blog? They immediately, for $100, built a 30,000 person retargeting list. Think you could make a little bit of money from that? Think you could get your offers in front of enough people? Get your touch points out there so you can make more sales, make more conversions, get more people on your list, add more value? Absolutely. This is what's available now with these extra traffic sources because you're using pro uh, content promotion rather than direct ads. Outbrain. Outbrain is another one that's really cool. So 48,819 targeted clicks to the site for less than six cents per click. All right? Lots of traffic out there if you have the right way to leverage it, and you now do. Paid promotion of owned media can lead to massive earned media wins, and paid and owned media can amplify earned media and give something of interest or credibility to incredible reach. What the heck did I just say? All right? Owned media. What is owned media? Owned media is your retargeting, is your email list, okay? Also, it is your content. Paid promotion of your content can lead to massive earned media, which you're earning through building a retargeting list, okay? Paid and owned media combined can amplify your earned media and give you massive credibility in the marketplace, blow up your, your sales, make more conversions, all around take your business and 10 exit, okay? That was a jumble, but it actually kind of makes sense in my head now. Breaching consumer ecosystems, okay? Targeted audiences are semi-unique and they tend to stick to their own online spheres of comfort. All right, what does that mean? How many of you guys are creatures of habit? Every single one of you in the room, whether your habits are crazy or their habits are narrow, every one of you is a creature of habit, including me. Audiences are semi-unique. On average, people do not stray out of, and these are self-defined channels, they don't do stray out of these self-defined channels of media consumption. Typically, when you go online to consume media, you typically do the exact same thing almost every time. You leverage the same thing. Some people love Bing. Other people, like me, I have hardly ever, ever used Bing unless I have to, okay? I, li I like to read. I'm a huge Kindle reader. I listen to some podcasts, not very many. Los, on the other hand, crazy podcast reader or listener, reads a little bit, okay? Twitter, I don't ever use Twitter. I don't know how to tweet, or whatever that word is. Los doesn't use Facebook, I mean, so, for some reasons. Uh, okay, so it's different. It's people have different areas they hang out in, okay? And that, therefore, you're only ever gonna reach a certain percentage of your marketplace if you only advertise in, in smaller areas or subsets of your market. If you fa fail to account for this thing, you're gonna miss out on a large subset of your audience. Some audience as a whole, though, reject specific types of media channels, and then in that, if that's the case, that channel can be avoided. So if you are in a market that, you know, they're, they're boycotting or they don't like a specific media channel, then ignore it. And sometimes that's the case. It's not 
as much anymore, but it does happen still. So if it's a very small subset of your market that does touch it, you can kind of push it off to the side until you've leveraged all the other bigger and better traffic sources. So here's what we're talking about. Here's a crazy looking Venn diagram, right? What this is showing is that audiences overlap, but the more, the more different sources you hit, the less and less of them wind up in each other's places. The bigger subsets are in other areas, okay? So Twitter, Twitter intersects with all these other things. People who like Twitter probably like Facebook, they may like iTunes, they may like YouTube, but by and large, they're not gonna absorb all different categories. Same thing with someone who's on Kindle may not be over on as much on iTunes. Someone who's on YouTube may not be on Pinterest as much. They could be, but they're, it's not, collectively and from a data standpoint, they're not, okay? There's a lot of differentiation in the marketplace. So if you're leveraging all these different things, like me, I, I am not, you guys, for most of you know, I am not an Apple product guy, right? I, I thought it was Sony Apple last year, and that didn't work. So I'm on Stitcher. I'm never on iTunes, okay? So someone who markets through iTunes is never gonna reach me because I'm on Stitcher, okay? Same thing with Pinterest. They can reach my wife, I really don't like that, but they can't get a hold of me because I'm never on Pinterest. I'm on YouTube occasionally, but I'm always on Facebook, I'm always on Kindle, and through our B BGS Twitter, I, I get a lot of Twitter feeds as well. So there's ways to reach people. You need to be targeting the markets that your people are in and more than just one of them. If you're just in Facebook, you're leaving out probably 80 plus percent of, of the available traffic that you could probably get access to because even on Facebook, you're only gonna be able to reach a small subset of your market on Facebook. You're never gonna reach the whole thing. And once you get, reach like 80% of what you can get, that next 20%, just like the Pareto principle, is gonna be, tw you know, 80% as hard as the rest of it was to get. So it's better to go ahead and just grab another traffic source than try to fight for that last little margin of, of oomph on a specific network. Know your demographic, obviously important. Research how, to target, how your target demographic interacts with each type and source of media. Rank them in order of usage. So you wanna figure out which media sources they use and then rank it. If, if your audience is huge on Facebook and lousy on Twitter, then Twitter would be at the bottom of your list and Facebook would be at the top of your list. Design content advertising campaigns that fit the way your market interacts and consumes media. If your market is elderly people who are not very techy, maybe YouTube videos are not the right thing. Maybe it's better to let them read their content. And also, if they're elderly, maybe you don't wanna make sure your content is not this big. Maybe you wanna have like big letters, like those big playing cards that like blow two pays off people's heads. You wanna have content that makes sense to your market and is consumable by your market the way they like to consume content, all right? That's a critical thing to making these content promotion campaigns run. If they don't wanna consume it in that format, it will never go viral, it will not get consumed, and you will not make any money. Start with the low-hanging fruit. Go off your ranking and pick the one that makes the most sense. Now, if the lowest, if, if the best category is for you to tr target in terms of most users is something you know nothing about and you can't get traffic in it, but maybe your number three category you're pretty good at getting traffic for, start there. Don't reinvent the wheel and try to start over and learn a whole new category of traffic promotion if you don't know how to do it and you know how to do something else that can make you money and then you can scale out to the next one, okay? Start with the lowest hanging fruit and that lowest hanging fruit is going to be dependent upon your industry and on your skill set and available budget. So when the landscape shifts, Evolution happens. This is true for both your methods of marketing and your methods of conversion. Everything changes. The, the traffic landscape is changing. The promotional landscape is changing. Everything else is changing as well. So what does this shift mean for your sales funnel? Well, we're gonna find out in just a second. Today, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about Facebook ads and driving using them to drive traffic to your store. Over the last week, we've doubled sales every single day. And to this morning, uh, about 7.30 this morning, we already were over $1,000 profit for the day 